Hi, you're watching Investor Insights, and in this video, I want to talk about QE. I've mentioned QE all the time. Quantitative easing uh, is basically a means by which the Federal Reserve is trying to prop up its economy. It's trying to revive um, speculative bubbles. Uh, it's trying to basically put life back into something which has died a long time ago. And the whole concept of quantitative easing is just flawed. Now, what is quantitative easing? Well, right now, it's just the means by which the government is stimulating demand. Quantitative easing over in the US is basically asset purchases through the Federal Reserve. The um, Federal Reserve is purchasing right now, and this is uh, quantitative easing three, part three, or because it has an infinite time frame, it's often been labelled as quantitative easing infinity. Because in theory, they can do this for the next 500 years. But what's happening is this. You've got the Fed, which is purchasing about $40 billion worth of government treasuries. And it's also purchasing $45 billion worth of mortgage-backed securities at the same time. That's every month. Now, the result of all these asset purchases, in theory, is to keep rates low. And in the case of the, uh, the mortgage-backed assets, to try and reflate the um, housing bubble. Lord knows why. But quantitative easing is adding a trillion dollars to the Fed's balance sheet every year. Five years ago, it was a trillion dollars. And now it's screaming to four trillion dollars. Now it took a lifetime to get to a trillion, in theory, and it took five years to quadruple that. This is going to be one sad story when it implodes. But quantitative easing is meant to keep rates low simply by making bond prices high. Now as you know when you have an income paying uh, instrument or asset the higher the price the lower the pay. That's just how it is. So if you look at a uh, stock paying dividend for example if you look at Telstra at uh, say two dollars it never got there but I'm, I'm just going to use this example Telstra at two dollars would be paying a 40 cent dividend fully franked so the return on that would be 10 percent uh, sorry 20 percent 40 cents out of two dollars now if Telstra goes to four dollars that dividend payout is going to basically halve in value 40 cents out of four dollars is going to be a 10 percent return so when bond prices go up, the payouts become less, or the yield becomes smaller and smaller. So with the Fed inflating this huge bond bubble, where well you've got the 10-year at one point in time trading, I think it was in the 1.4s or somewhere along those lines, it's crazy to have price to have yields that low means the price must have been inflated so high. And speculators were just piling in because they knew that whatever bonds they were buying, the Fed was going to buy off them. So the Fed was going to be the biggest fool. Well, ultimately, the Fed will never be the biggest fool because the biggest fool is the American taxpayer. They're going to have to foot the bill in the long term. So this pointless exercise of QE is going to backfire and it's going to cause one of the greatest, biggest fiscal, uh, sorry, financial debacle that the world's ever seen. 
forget the Great Depression, this is going to be bigger. And it all came because they obviously didn't want a mild or a deep recession back in 2008. They got to stimulate. Let's turn to quantitative easing. History will tell you that quantitative easing has never and will never work. So how this educated, this very talented and knowledgeable person would unload three bouts of quantitative easing on the American economy, man, I'm lost for words. So next time you're about to invest in the, or next time you're going to invest in the bond market, think twice. And don't forget that the chase for yield has led to the stock market bubble. You're living it right now. So I'm skeptical of both markets. And when it implodes, I hope you're not in either of them. <laughs>